Praise the Lord, Bridgeway. I said, praise the Lord, Bridgeway. One more time for the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord, Bridgeway. So good to see all of you that are here in Columbia, online, at Owens Mills, Reisterstown. This is the fourth and the final week for our winter guest speaker series. Every year I like to bring in friends and guests who can deposit a word into our congregation, maybe people that you might not be able to see otherwise. And today I'm going to give an appropriate introduction in just a moment to uh, Evander Holyfield. But first, I want to read you a passage from Scripture from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 through 27. Next week, I'm starting a brand new series called The Splendor of Gender. We're going to talk about masculinity, femininity, and transgender. What does the Word of God have to say about that? You ready to think about this stuff? All right, but today, check out what God's word says. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like a man running aimlessly. I do not fight like a man beating the air. No, I beat my body and I make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. There's somebody in our midst that's been fighting for a crown, for a prize. He is the heavyweight champion of the world. And let me give you an appropriate introduction Competing from 1984 to 2011, he represented the United States at the 1984 Summer Olympics, winning a bronze medal in the light heavyweight division. He turned professional at age 21, moving up to cruiserweight in 1985 and winning his first world championship the following year. He reigned as the undisputed champion at cruiserweight in the late 1980s and at heavyweight in the early 1990s and remains the only boxer in history to win the undisputed championship in two weight classes. He's the only of the only four-time world championship heavyweight champion, having held the unified WBA, WBC, IBF titles from 1990 to 1992, the WBA and the IBF titles again from 1993 to 1994, and between 1996 and 1999, and the WBA title for a fourth time from 2000 to 2001. Today we're going to learn about his family, his faith, his fight, and maybe a little bit of fun. Would you give a warm, raucous, (laughs) Bridgeway welcome to the heavyweight champion of the world! Evander Holyfield. <laughs> What's happening, champ? Uh, not too much. <laughs> <laughs> well, just so you know, Somebody like Evander to take time to be here all day and throughout the weekend when there's so many other places he can be and so many other uh, demands on his life. When I asked him if he would come, he uh, graciously and generously said yes. He texts me every day, sometimes two times a day, talk about God's word, a little spiritual mentorship, I suppose. And, and when I asked him if he'd come, he said yes. So I just want to personally say in front of everyone, Thank you for coming to Bridgeway Community Church. I appreciate you. You're welcome. We're going to talk about family. We're going to talk about faith, talk about fight, maybe a little fun. Family, tell us about your kids. Well, I have 11, and I'm... Ho, ho, ho. (laughs) 11 kids. Yes. yes. Did you you find out what caused that? Well, you know... 
I love kids. <laughs> okay, so why not just have 11? Well, I'm saying if you can afford it. One time I asked Savannah, I said, how can I pray for you? He said, pray for my kids. I said, send me their names. <laughs> he sent me 11 names. They all begin with an E. I said, Lord, I can't pray that long. <laughs> <laughs> but they all begin with an E, don't they? Well, yeah, E, I, I, because the fact of the matter, you know, you know, I want everybody to have E's. <laughs> so, so I guess you decided not to name them George, 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 George. I didn't want to do that. But. <laughs> okay. But one actually was named Ashley. What happened there? Well, you know, I had one daughter that, you know, because her mom, her mom then wanted to have an E. And so when she got older, she found out she was the only one that didn't have an E. She wanted to eat, so changed to Yvette. <laughs> Yvette Ashley. So six, six boys, five girls? Uh, yes. How about yes. that? Okay. Uh, tell us about the role of your father, because you really didn't know him growing up, right? Well, I, you know, I did know my father, and so I asked my mama about my father, and my mama told me that he outworked everybody. He was always on time. And I said, what else? And she said, that's all you need to know. <laughs> and so, you know, uh, I, so I wanted to work hard, and I, you know, they, and they say he was very strong. So that right there was a big part of it, too. And I, I wanted to be strong like people told me I was skinny. I ain't like being skinny. How old were you when you met him? Um, I was 21 years old. Just came back from the Olympics, and uh, my mama would say, I want to take you to see your daddy. And I was like, what? You know, because you know, I'm like, when you get a million dollars, you get to thinking, you don't need no daddy no more. <laughs> but now he show up. <laughs> but my mama said, I, I want to take you to see him. And so, um, and, and you know, I, I, I didn't think, you know, I can't tell my mama what to do. Now, I can think in a way I want, but I got to do what you say. So, um, of course, we go to Alabama, and I find out that it was my mama. It really wasn't my dad. It was my mama. My mama didn't like it. But, <laughs> but find out that, you know, you know, I seen my dad and seen his built, and I realized that, I'm going to look good when I get older. <laughs> I said, oh, I'm going to look good. He was in good shape, huh? Yeah, he was in great shape. What about the influence of your mother? We talk about that a lot. Well, the influence of my mother, I, uh, I feel that I wouldn't be who I am if I didn't have that mom. My mama could have quit, but she didn't quit. And, and just as people call me the real deal, but the real deal really was my mom. And um, <laughs> because... And, and I said that because the fact of the matter, everything that I wanted to do, she wouldn't let me do it. And I knew that. She said, uh-uh, no, 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 no. She had learned from all the rest of them that ain't working. And so, you know, I, I, you, because of the Bible, my mama, you stay in this Bible, you do this, you do this, she paid them tithe and like that, and here say I am. Say that again now? <laughs> She paid the time. Okay. She paid them tithes, and, they, you know, everything worked. Oh, <laughs> uh, boy. She uh, introduced you to the Lord as well. Tell us about how you came to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Well, I, you, know, had to, you know, we had to go. We had to go. I had to, you had to confess, go up and confess what you done every time. You, and I was like, you know, my grandma was like looking at go up there. Go through that testimony. I'm so you know, it was just amazing that, and the fact of doing that so long, eventually, I wanted to do it myself, and I came to a point where that he said, you know, we need some young people to give themselves to the Lord, yeah, because he said the older people already know which way they're going already, and so you need some young people, and so I was one of them. Well, my grandma looked at me, but I always. I had already said I was going to go myself, but, but she made sure she, <laughs> that me going up there. And so, I, you know, I, 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 I really wanted God to use me. And, uh, and then you know what? He used you. And here I am. 
pretty amazing. The influence and the impact of a mother. How do you stay connected to the Lord? I know you do spiritual disciplines and practices every day. You sent me a text at 3 this morning. What, what time do you get up? Well, um, you know, my mama told me, like, you know, I was a scary kid. It was amazing. I could be so scary, and I became all that. It is because it's obvious that God used, used what he had. And so, and so you know, my mama used to tell me, I said, Mama, I said, I said, I wake up too early and I get scared. My mom said, well, you know, well, it's something you can do while you're up now. Now, while you're up now, if you pick up that Bible and read the Bible. Now, the devil's going to try to put you to sleep. Now, if he puts you to sleep, you can go back to sleep. But if you don't, you got some work. <laughs> so, so either way it go, you know, you, you, you pick up the Bible. If, if you fall asleep because you want to go to sleep, then it's fine. But, that, but in anything... If he don't put you to sleep, you got the word, and which is which is the light. What do you read in the Bible? Huh? What do you read in the Bible? Well, my own, books? I, Revelation and, and Genesis, both of them. You know, because Revelation start with the Revelation first. And all the promise in the Revelation shows you what what's going on now, and then if you go, then you, you go back to the Genesis and the promise in Genesis really tell you. What Jesus already, what Jesus gonna do, and so when it all comes, it, it, it matches up and get you, get you, get you where you can receive the word. You know, because the, the most important thing is being able to receive and know that all that the price that Jesus paid for you, that price that He paid for you, and 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 it gonna touch everything that you connected with. You know, my my, you know. You know, when I look at my kids, I tell my kids, no, 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 no. You, just like my mama said, I'm better than my mama because she wanted me to be better. So the, the word of God talk about glory to glory. And so, and by me, by me doing what I'm supposed to do, it's going to be a lot easier for my kid. So if, then if I don't do what I, I don't do what I'm supposed to do, it's going to be a little harder on my kid. So if you love your kids, then you yourself go and say, no, I don't want this to fall off on my kid because if I don't change it, then what they going to do? Mm -hmm. So, you know, and the thing is that my mama could have given up and said, look, he the number nine, huh, doggy? But she didn't. <laughs> so here I am. Yeah, so you're the youngest of nine kids. Uh, youngest of nine. God bless your mother. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> You still go to church? I mean, being all big and famous, is it hard to go to church? No, it's, no. I, I fly to I fly from Florida to Atlanta to go to church because yeah, I do too. That's how. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I do church. Well, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm like because people ask me, said, right. why would you do that? I said because if anything I want, I pay. So, you know, so what, you know, I like to get in the same word. I, you know, it's like I had one mama. That's it. I never had another mama. I, I don't, didn't even play like it. No, I got one mama, and that's enough. And so, yeah, it's pretty much when you got a good teacher, you're not going to get confused. You sit with one. Uh, you get another one. You, you get all these people talking to you. I'm telling you, you can get, you, 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 you can get frustrated. You live in both places, uh, Fort Lauderdale and Atlanta. Which one do you like better? Atlanta. <laughs> but uh, but you know but you you know how in the Bible you told told uh, Abraham you got to get away from Ken folks sometimes. <laughs> you, have, you have to do what you have to do to for things for you to be at peace and for everything to work. That's a word. Well, well, it is. What encouragement would you give to people today that may be coming here, they don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, maybe they're looking for answers, maybe they came just because you're here. What word of encouragement would you give them? Uh, yeah, it, it's just, I'm th I think the big thing is that when you get the first commandment, honor your father and your mother. I'm telling you, you know, it's amazing that, you know, People think about all of them, but if you get the first one right, 
if you get everything will line up, if everything will line up and you get the first thing, I'm telling you, if you can just be able to love your parents for who they are, not for what you want them to be, you'll get there. You How know. about that? Wow. That is indeed the first commandment with a promise. We've talked about family. We've talked about faith. Let's talk about fighting for a second. How did you get into boxing? Your mom had something to do with that too? Well, yeah, yeah, I but sure did. Be, she used to beat you down. Well, well, yeah, not, not so much as that is that I was the youngest, I was the youngest of nine, and my brothers and sisters, them, wasn't nobody going to bother me because my brothers and sisters, they fight one, they had to fight everybody. So now once my brothers and sisters, them, start moving off, then I was there by myself. <laughs> and so, you know, and yeah. And I was fast. I can run real fast. So them guys be talking that noise. I sit right there by the by the door when that when that bell ring. I open that door and I <laughs> I run. And so I run home. And so my mama see me looking out the window one day, and she come on look out that window and see the boy standing in the yard. And my mama looked at me and get back out there. Wow. And, and so you realize that I, I get back out there, I hit the guy one time, he started crying. The fight is over. I said, well then. How my mom encouraged me to fight. Yeah. That's the title of his next book. <laughs> wow. You had a mentor, a coach, who told you you could be somebody. Well, yeah, it was like when I was, I was coming in from football. Because I, I, I like football. I, I like anything that was tough and rugged. I, you know, I was that kid. But I'm coming in, and, 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 I, and I seen the guy hitting the speed bat. So I, I go up and ask, I said, can I, can I hit the speed bat? And the man said, no. I said, why? He said, because you got to be on the boxing team. I said, well, can I be on a boxing team? And he said, no. <laughs> so the next day I asked him, and he said, no. Then the next day I asked him, and he said, no. Then the fourth day I come in there, I go, he looked at me, he just shook his head. And I, so I act like I was walking away. So he turned it back, and I ran up there and asked him, yeah, come on in. <laughs> he told me, come in. Then when he told me, come in, he said, oh. He said, well, he go ahead and hit the bat. He said, this one right here. So I hit this bat. He said, hit it hard now. I said, okay. I hit that thing, and it hurt my hand, and he started laughing. When he started laughing, I just kept hitting it. Then he said, oh, hold up, your hand bleeding. I said, it's okay. And I just kept hitting it. And he said, he said, son, stop. You hurt your hand. I said, he said, you tough, ain't you? And I looked at him, I said, yes, sir. He said, do you know you can be like Muhammad Ali? And I looked at him, I said, I'm only eight years old. <laughs> and, and he said, you won't always be eight. And I believed him because next week I'm going to be nine. <laughs> so, wow. so, he was prophetic, too. Well, you know, it's all about believing. And so... Uh, so he said, he said, wow. He said, he said, you think you want to be like Muhammad Ali? I looked at him, I said, I gotta ask my mama. <laughs> he asked me, he said, what? I said, I gotta ask my mama. He said, son, you know you got a good mama. And so, you know, at that, at that age, eight years old, only thing I know, you don't know my mama. But <laughs> I didn't say that because my mama said, you zip it up. And so, and so I go home and I, I go ask my mom. And my mama said, do you know what they're going to do to you? You know, I was like, she had that look on her face. My mom had that look, that means she get ready to swing. So I, I bagged the head back because <laughs> she's going to go for the head. And she, then she said, do you know what they're going to do to you? I said, no, mama. She said, they're going to hit you. And I start laughing because I get three whoopings, three whoopings a day. 
my, everybody hit me. <laughs> so, so, and my mama told me I can hit them back. I couldn't hit nobody back in the family because I was the youngest. And so that's how boxing started. Wow. <laughs> Did your mama believe in you? Well, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, ultimately, because my mama believed me, I became everything. Because even when things, when things didn't work, my mama said, do it over. And getting up early, my mama said, get up early. You, if, if you ain't got nothing to do, at least get out to bed. Look out the window. <laughs> but I just, it, it was like that. My, my mama was, I'm like, you know, because people always ask me, why are you talking about your mama? I said, because I wouldn't have been who I am. I know I wouldn't. I, because my, mom, now, my mama was so good that even my brother's sister was afraid to tell me to do anything different than what my mama Cause ho that whooping she put on them, <laughs> they realized they were gonna not tell me because they know that I'm the one where start crying first and start telling everything. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I'm the, I'm the one that you know just everybody knew that my mama my mama look at me I'm gonna start talking. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm going to tell everything that I know. <laughs> I'm going to tell her what I've seen and everything. Because I wasn't going to that whooping. See, now, they can leave. I can't. I ain't got no, don't nobody know me. I ain't got no friend's house to go over. <laughs> How about that? So here you have a mentor that's telling you you can be like Muhammad Ali. You have a mom that believes in you. Didn't she tell you you could be the champion? Yeah, she, she told me. She said, son. If you listen and you follow the direction and don't quit, eventually you're going to get there. And so I guess the biggest problem I had is, you know, now, as a kid, everything was cool. When I turned 16, it was prom time. So my mama, just, I told my mama I ain't want to go to the prom. And she told me, she said, son, you're trying to be average. I said, what you mean, mama? She said, you don't work so hard to, to win this thing to go to Canada and you're going to go to a prom? You want to be average. You want to be like the average people. Now, she said, you want me to tell that girl? Do you want me to tell her? Or do you want to tell her? <laughs> so I know my mama going to embarrass me now because everybody thought, can people thought if you live in the ghetto, you do anything that you want to. Not in my house. <laughs> so, you know, so I had to tell her that I, I couldn't take it to prom, so I went there. I went and uh, Canada, and I won the whole tournament. And I have a picture that I show my kids. I said, see how I look? They said, Daddy, you ain't look happy. I said, I know, but I won everything. <laughs> I said, but I said, because my mama started, started, started uh, allowing me to, my mama started putting that pressure on me as a kid to, let me know I couldn't do what everybody else did. Mm -hmm. And because I didn't do what everybody else did, I'm the only person in the world that ever been the heavyweight champion of the world four times. So many things I accomplished because it started it start at a young age. You can't wait till you get 19 and 20 to do it. You have to start at a young age. Huh, how about that? The sacrifices. Yeah, from a young age. <laughs> I know we talked about your kids, talked about your father, your mother. Married, single, looking, or not? Well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm single, and, but I will get married again because I, I like taking care of people. Okay. Taking care of people is what, you know. And Anybody in here want to be taken care of? That's good. I, Okay, so you've been married, you've been married how many times? I've been married three times. Married three times? Yes. All right, so 11 kids, been married three times. Dude, alimony must be like killing you. <laughs> I mean, Lord. But it, it wasn't about money. It was with me, I just realized that, you know, it, you know, if you, when you raise properly, 
you'll find that money is never going to be the issue. Just pay your tithes. Pay your tithes. Everything going to be all right. And, and that's what my mama told me. And I'm the one that never had no problem with money. And but so, you, 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 your marriage didn't work these three times. Was it because of money or was it because of uh, you didn't know how to handle them? They didn't know how to handle you? Well, and it's, it was the fact is that the balance in anything, the mother and the father, it take both of them. You're not going to make it on one of them. It take both of them to, to balance you out. Because everybody that I got, they were just like my mom. So the fact is, I trust my mom. So that means that, you know, anything they did, you know, I was like, oh, well, you know, maybe it's going to turn out right. I never knew that things were going to turn out with my mom, but it did. But, but you, you get somebody just like I got. Now, Each one of them was just like your mama. Yeah. They had her, her ways. And like this, and so the whole big thing, you know, my whole thing, I just sit there and I just listen. Oh, okay. So the All next right. one is not going to be like your mama. Well, <laughs> they have some of it. Some of it. You know, yeah. they, they have some of the things. I would do some pastoral counseling I'm, 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 I'm for real. <laughs> you got to bring her by here. I, 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 I want to I meet her when the time comes. Have you ever heard of a pre? You ever heard of a prenup? I'm just wondering. If you, well, I, I have, but, you know, I, I <laughs> love itself. If you got to, I feel that you got to have a prenup. You, you shouldn't even marry nobody. Okay? You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm like, why? I'm called, called, love is more than that. Love is more than that. I'm just, you know, the thing is, is that I love my mama, and, and I became successful because, you know, I became successful because I love my mama so much. And I said, mama, you're not going to ever have to ask nobody for nothing. Like this, and it's like this. And I didn't know if it was the right thing to do, but... That's what it was, and my mama didn't have to ask nobody for nothing from the time I was 21 to the day that she passed. But, you know, she never had to ask nobody for nothing. And, and I realized that it's, it's, that's, the whole, that's the whole big thing is when you ask God for something that is going to help somebody else, I'm talking about it's pretty much just like your kids. My, I didn't want my, like, I, my mama had a, a sixth grade education, and, like, you know, with us, they don't bother to read to us. So I was trying to figure out how in the world somebody my age knows something that I don't know. And, and so my mama was like, son, uh, when y'all go out, who run the fastest? I said, well, I do. She said, okay, then. Do you wonder why they don't run as fast as you? I said, well, uh -uh. Then she said, well, you know, it's obvious that you've been running, they haven't. Now, I, I'm, if you, my mama told me, if I could read, I could stay home with her and read to her. <laughs> so, so, so the thing is, my mama would tell me, so everybody got something they do a little bit better. But if you don't brag, then they won't be talking about how smart they are. Because my mama realized that if I, she said, I'm sure you're bragging. I didn't know what bragging was. She said, are you talking about you win the thing all the time? I said, yeah. She said, okay, that's bragging. You stop bragging, they'll stop bragging. So you find out that in life that whatever you do good, you bragging about it, they're going to talk about what they do good. Hmm. And so you're going to get the other end of the other, other end of the stick, you know. So whatever you do real well, you know, you, you don't brag about it. You know, I'm a good fighter. I don't talk about how good I fight, you know. But, and, but if I start talking about how good a fighter I am, somebody's going to start telling what they better than me in. So, you know, you get that balance. Got it. Who hit you the hardest? Well, George Foreman. Uh, no doubt. Are you serious? Yeah. Did he hit you with a grill or? Like? Well, you know, you can't, you can't, you can't bring the grill in the ring, but. Okay. okay. But was, was, the thing is, punched. is that uh, you know, now, now George, George Foreman was like about two fifty, two sixty, and I was like when I fought him, I was about two oh eight, and and so the art of the game for me was, I remember the people said. If he ever hit Holyfield, it ain't going to be it. And so I'm like, so, well, it's supposed to be it. If I get hit by it, I said, but I'm not going to get hit by it. I said, I'm going to hit him three to one. And you know what? And I hit him three to one. But in that 11th round, at the end of the 11th round, he caught me that one shot. 
I got my head back, and I couldn't take it on for a back, and he boom. <laughs> when he hit me, everything just stiffed up. And Where? so, and the bell rung. Where'd he hit you? He hit me right in the mouth. I thought, I thought he knocked out all my teeth out. And, and, and all of a sudden, you know, the bell rung, and my corner people said, come on back. But I couldn't move right then and there. I, I was stuck. Then the blood started flowing back. Then I was old. <laughs> I come over like this. Did he knock all my teeth out? <laughs> they said, no, they, they in. <laughs> and come to the next round, I helped him about the whole round. I said, they, and so the people after the fight, they said, you had to, you had to hug the old man. I said, but I beat him 11 rounds. I wasn't going to lose that last round because <laughs> I, I thought I, I wasn't going to lose the last round. So he hits you the hardest. Yes. Hmm. Who bit you the most? <laughs> Oh, Mike, I just, I no problem. <laughs> no, you know what? You know what? No, even in, you know, even in that situation now. So, well, oh, well, oh, well, is that what happened? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Take that down. I mean, <laughs> at least it had a racism background. That was good. He got a piece of that ear. Which ear was it? Wait a minute, this, this one here. Got a just a tip. Huh, did you it know? hurt? Of course it did. I'm like, I'm like, but you know what people don't understand, you know, Mike and I been knowing each other ever since Mike was 17. He was 17, and I was 21. And so, and so what people don't, didn't really know about is the fact that, you know, when you're 21, a 17-year-old kid, you don't care how big he is, because he, he was heavyweight and I was light heavy. And you know, at that age, he's talking, well, well, I don't want to hurt you. I said, who? <laughs> I let him know, I'm a grown man. You ain't got no license to do nothing. And so we sparred. And so in the point of sparring, I got the best. So from that point on, Mike, me and, Mike, me and Mike had an understanding that, that, that it's going to take more than you punching hard. Because you know what I'm thinking? Because I, you know, I was the biggest one in my family when I got older. My brother did I always remember you, you're a kid. <laughs> they, put, they put their hand on my nose. Let me tell you something, boy. You don't want none of this. But you beat him. Oh, yeah, I beat him twice. So why did he bite you? Well, because he wanted to get out. And I, and I know that because I just bite my brothers and sisters when I want to get out. I see this is what it was. All the time. <laughs> so you could identify. Well, I can identify with the situation. Is that situation. why you forgave him? Well, I, well, I have to. You know, you know the Bible says, you know, who have not sinned, you know, you know. You, you, yeah. it, it, it's come down to that. With me, I just... I knew because the fact of the matter, I bit my brothers and sister so many times. <laughs> when I tell them I give and they don't let me go, whatever I can bite, I bite. <laughs> wow. When I bite them, when, it, when they squinch up like this, I just got to beat them to it. I can get in front of my mama. Can't nobody hit me in front of my mama. <laughs> Could nobody hit me in front of my mama. He bit, he bit you once? No, he beat me twice. So that let me know he really wanted to get out of there. <laughs> twice on the same ear? No, 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 no. He, he did this one once, and they, that one, he did that second. But he, he didn't, I, you know, when he, when, it, when he just touched this, I was trying to get that head back. And he just, so and then he didn't get a chance to get a piece of this one. Just, <laughs> just, a, just a taste. You want a piece of me? <laughs> you want a piece of me? <laughs> So he bit both ears. Yeah. Wow. Hey, man, have you ever, uh, you know, we talk about faith, family, fighting. <clears throat> have you ever taught a, a pastor how to box? Well, I haven't, but I can. You can. I can. You know, I'm, you know, you know if, if you listen and you follow direction, I have you on. Well, I have been doing research on YouTube, and I found a great form 
So tell me if you think this is a good form. <laughs> That's pretty good form. Get it. That, that's what they call shallow boxing. And shallow boxing is good. I'm from, actually, you learn how to box by in the mirror, punching, you know, punching, looking at yourself, because people tend to do better when they see themselves. Hmm. People tend to do better when they see themselves. I want to see myself box you. I, I, I'd really love to learn a little bit, and I think, you know, you can disciple me in boxing. I can disciple you in other things, but uh, would you mind teaching me a few? Yeah, why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? All right, now. <laughs> Be gentle. All right, first of all, <clears throat> what is a jab? Well, you know, the jab is a, that's one of the most important things because this is how you measure, it, especially when you got long arm, you okay. kind of like this. And, but that jab is, that's the first shot you want to hit a guy head on. Because you, if you, so you hit step a, into it. You, you transfer the weight, uh -huh. transfer the weight. And so, and reason why you use a jab, and that's your weakest hand. Okay. Because if they get past that, they get the boom. Oh. oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, call it, you call it the boom. Yeah, well, I'm telling you, know, just your, your, uh -huh. your, your powerful so, hand. You so know. you're transferring the weight. Yeah, transferring How the much weight. you weigh? Huh? How much you weigh? I weigh about 230. Yeah, me too. Okay. So. <laughs> Don't worry about that. All right. I want you to punch me because I want, I want people to know that I took a punch from uh, Evander Holyfield. So this is what we'll do. Whenever I mention the word ear, you can hit me, okay? Okay. So let's start by playing it by ear. Oh, shoot. okay. All right. Ask me what my favorite verse is in the Bible. What's your favorite verse? He who has an ear, let him go. Oh, okay, good. The word heart, H-E-A-R-T, the word in the middle is ear. Did you know that? Oh, that's good. That's good. Okay, that's, that's enough. That's enough. Uh, before we bring it to an end and before the pastor comes up, uh, to close it out in Owens Mills and here in, uh, in Columbia. What final word of encouragement would you give the Bridgeway Community Church? Well, I, I would say one of the most important things is, you know, honor your parents. I'm so you know, I'm saying that if you get the number one right, honor your parents, your father and mother, life is going to be good. Not just for you, but your kids and the grandkids. I'm saying and I, that's one of the most important things that I... I tell you my word, man. Thank you for being with us. I appreciate you. What do y'all say to Evander Holyfield, the world heavyweight champion of the world? Yeah.